PlayStation 5 Pro is finally here, but is it more of a pro or a con? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. This is the video that's been years in the making. In fact, if we go back all the way to the launch of the PlayStation 5, I famously said this. The PlayStation 5 is currently on first version. PlayStation or Sony has been very clear or their, their pattern is easy to follow where they always release a slim version of the same model system and there's suspicions that a pro version would come out around mid-cycle, even with the PlayStation 5. This is still just a tiny little YouTube channel filming in a small little closet in my basement. But if you watched that video from a number of years ago, but the fact still remains that many, many people are still using a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 4 Pro. So with the announcement of the PlayStation 5 Pro and the release of the PlayStation 5 Pro, is it all pros or is it a giant con? Well, let's kind of break this down a little bit. Gams go. Are you paying too much for Netflix, Spotify, Disney Plus, Crunchyroll, Duolingo, Canva, or Adobe? Gamsgo has you covered with premium shared subscriptions for a fraction of the price directly from the distributor. Yes, Gamsgo is the shared premium experience that you've been looking for that saves a ton of money. I personally use Gamsgo for my Netflix, my Spotify, my Disney Plus, and my Crunchyroll subscriptions, and I have saved tons of money by switching to Gamsgo. Switching to Gamsgo is as easy as clicking the link in the description or up in the title card, which will take you to the main Gamsgo website, select the services that you're looking for, and buy them. But to show you how easy it is, we're gonna take 30 seconds and we're gonna sign up for Netflix. So we've clicked the affiliate link and I'm gonna click purchase now on Netflix. Now we have an option to buy three months or six months. I'm gonna buy a six month membership. I'm gonna say activate auto renewal because you don't wanna miss out anyway. Now in my case, I only need one profile. That means that I get one of the five included shared profiles with my Netflix account and I can install it on one device in my home. Do you have multiple devices in your home? You might want to switch to the five profiles option, which also unlocks multiple devices so that you can use all of your profiles across multiple devices. But in my case, one profile is plenty. Now this is the most important step. It's gonna say, do you have a promo code? Yes, I do. And the promo code is GEARS. We're gonna apply our promo code and it's gonna say, this is a valid promo code. We're gonna click to go to payment and then we're gonna enter in all of our details. This is a one-time payment of just $21.26. That is crazy cheap for premium Netflix on one device with one profile. I'm going to pay now. I'm gonna enter my credit card information and that's it. Once you've paid, you get immediate access to Netflix and it's as simple as logging into your Gamsgo account, getting the username and pass key, and then going to legit Netflix. Now it's gonna immediately say, well, who is this? Now I am account number three, Gears and Tech. And it's gonna ask for my pin code because I locked this down. Once I have my pin code in, now instantly I am in the full premium Netflix experience. This gives me HD Netflix, I can download it, and it's that simple. And it works the same on all your other favorite streaming platforms. This is truly an amazing deal, you don't wanna miss it. Click the link down below to grab your deal. You see, Mark Cerny released an eight minute video detailing the release of the PlayStation 5 Pro. And I'm super excited about it. Just to be clear right out front, I am getting a PlayStation 5 Pro. I will do whatever it takes to get one for science because you guys wanna know, is it any good? And I gotta find out. So before you go spend all your money, let's back up, figure out what the PlayStation 5 Pro has to offer. Now, when we look at the video from Mark Cerny, we find the PlayStation 5 Pro is so good that the first three minutes of the video officially telling us that the PlayStation 5 Pro is here was not spent talking about the PlayStation 5 Pro. No, it was spent talking about how great the regular PlayStation 5 is. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot 
to the table. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed. Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. Amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. They came to a conclusion on what gamers want. And they talk about that in the video. They talk about how PlayStation 5 gamers have two choices. They can choose performance mode or they can choose quality mode. Now, the PlayStation 5 has some trade-offs. You see, the graphics look beautiful. And if you want them to look beautiful, you can certainly select quality mode. Now, quality mode will pump some very, very detailed, high resolution graphics. It'll fully enable ray tracing. It'll turn on all the beautiful textures that the PlayStation 5 has to offer. But Sony being Sony, they collect stats. And what it turns out is only about 25% of us are actually turning on quality mode. You see, we're turning on performance mode instead. That means on purpose, we are selecting lower spec graphics so that we can gain higher performance. And that's really the problem that the PlayStation 5 Pro is looking to solve. Now, Sony calls this the big three. Now, the big three consists of a larger GPU, advanced ray tracing, and AI-driven upscaling. In the release video, they show a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons of games running in performance mode and the new PlayStation 5 Pro graphics. And they also show you PlayStation 5 regular in graphics mode compared to the PlayStation 5 Pro graphics. And what we find is there's very little difference between a PlayStation 5 running in graphics mode versus a PlayStation 5 Pro running in regular PlayStation 5 Pro mode. The big difference obviously is that the PlayStation 5 Pro can essentially do the high detailed graphics while still giving you 120 frames per second. And that is the problem that the PlayStation 5 Pro wants to solve. That is having to be forced to turn your graphics down so that you can get that frame rate. Now you can have all your graphics and still have the great frame rate. Let's dig into the big three a little bit more, starting with the GPU. The GPU has 67% more compute units than the current PS5 console and 28% faster memory. Overall, this enables up to 45% faster rendering for gameplay, making the experience much smoother. And that's great. Having a PlayStation 5, I can tell you, I haven't really been worried about a smoother experience. The games that I've been playing have been smooth, smooth enough that I've never, ever, ever, ever sat and said, gee, I wish this was a smoother experience. But Sony obviously thinks that we need that smoother experience. Now, they got this information as they talked to developers. That's what they say. Developers wanted to create a smoother experience. And of course, if we're being hyper nitpicky, then sure, there's optimizations that they would want to benefit from by having an upgraded GPU. Second, advanced ray tracing. Mark Cerny says, Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference. Allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy, allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I'm kind of on the fence with ray tracing. I know that it can drastically increase the experience of the game. And if you're playing experiential games, they use the Horizon series, they use the Spider-Man series to really showcase that those reflections look beautiful when you're getting the reflections across the water or on glass. And it does, but I always had it turned off. And that's not because I didn't want it. It's because I really don't know what I'm missing. I don't feel like the experience is really worse for having that off. And if it was on or off, I really couldn't care less, really. That brings us to the third of the big three. And I think the most important, AI-driven upscaling. Now, PSSR, as they call it, is, I mean, I think it's just FSR because they're still using an AMD GPU. They didn't change that. So is this just Sony's AI upscaling 
skin on top of FSR. One thing I know though, Sony loves their proprietary special stuff, okay? Don't believe me, go back anywhere in history. Betamax, mini disc, Blu-ray disc, and on the PlayStation 5, Tempest Audio, which, I mean, it's supposed to replace surround sound audio. Tempest is what everybody wants. You want a sound bar that runs Tempest. So if Sony can successfully pull off this PSSR, then perhaps they pitch that as a new patented technology that others can license. And that's what Sony's really good at. They have hits and misses, and sometimes they hit Blu-ray, for example, and sometimes they miss Betamax, for example. So it makes sense that they want to call their AI-driven super resolution something new, something exciting, so that they can tell you only PlayStation has it. Now, if you're hearing all of this great news and you're looking at the side-by-side -side comparisons of the befores and the afters with the PlayStation 5 Pro and you're saying, holy crap, this is like a dream come true. This is exactly what I've been looking for. It can be yours for the especially low price of 699 US dollars. Now, of course, you're saying to yourself, well, yeah, okay, a PlayStation 5 Pro with the Blu-ray drive and everything, you know, it's gotta be a little bit more money than the regular PlayStation 5. That's where you'd be wrong. You see, the core bundle does not come with a disc drive of any sort. It is the diskless edition. Now, Sony has said that they will make disc drives available in the future with the face plates that you need to actually install it. So it comes with that same modular disc design, but we don't know if we can use a PlayStation 5 regular disc on the PlayStation PlayStation 5 Pro. I'm gonna find out though, and that's one of the reasons why I need to get a PlayStation 5 Pro so that I can do these tests for you guys, for science, for the people. But that brings us back to, should you get one? You see, back when I did the PlayStation 4 Pro review, and I said, don't even get a PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 4 Pro is all you need. And I said then, just wait for the PlayStation 5 Pro and upgrade to that. And now here we are, and you're wondering, do I still stand by that statement? Actually, no, I don't. You see, there is still a huge PlayStation 4 install base, huge. We have not seen the death of PlayStation 4 games coming out. They still come out. If you're buying a new game, you can still get it on PlayStation 4. And it still comes with enhanced graphics on PlayStation 4 Pro. And dare I say it, when you put PlayStation 4 Pro graphics up against PlayStation 5 graphics, it's not that different. It's just so similar that I just can't imagine spending that kind of money when you can get a used PlayStation 4 Pro that's professionally cleaned and works great for way, way, way less money. And that brings me to the problem that Sony is trying to solve. Sony wants to solve the graphic fidelity and the performance issue. They wanna bring those together so that you don't have to choose. You can have the highest quality graphics while still getting the best possible frame rates. Even though Sony's trying to solve this graphics problem, I'm not sure it's a problem. I can't remember the last time that I've looked at PlayStation 4 graphics and thought, gee, those suck. They've always looked pretty good. I don't think the graphics is the issue at all. In fact, I think the graphics are a detriment. We've hit the point in time where the developers have so much power available to them that they get so distracted by the visuals. They're trying to make the most visually impressive game possible. And some of us have come to expect that, but many of us are willing to accept a lower quality visual game in exchange for an amazing gameplay experience. If you don't believe me, have a look at some of the highest selling games of this generation. Many of them are on the Switch and nobody can tell me that a Nintendo Switch is pumping out graphics as good as even a PlayStation 4, okay? So we're willing, it's been proven that we're willing to accept bad graphics in exchange for gameplay. But if you have the option for good graphics, you kinda have the obligation to make good graphics and good gameplay. But if you can't do both, if you can't have good graphics and good gameplay, developers are so willing to go for the graphics and sacrifice the gameplay. And I think that the PlayStation 5 Pro just puts it more in the developer's hands to sacrifice that, 
to go for, we gotta make it look good. We've gotta utilize the PS5 Pro, everything that it has. And they just don't have the time for the gameplay. And that's where games are taking two, three, four, five years to develop. Look at Grand Theft Auto 6. I mean, it's taking forever to come out because they wanna get it down. They wanna get the gameplay and they wanna get the graphics. And they're, they're doing it. They're gonna pull it off. Rockstar is one of the few companies who don't care about timelines though. It takes however long it takes, and that's how long it takes. But look at other developers. Activision comes to mind. Every year they need another title. They are not putting in the time to bake it and simmer it and really make sure it's got everything that it needs. It's always a rush product that just gets patched after. And patching brings me to my final point, because this is a question I'm already seeing on the message boards everywhere. Has console gaming hit that threshold where PC gaming is starting to look really attractive. You see, PC gaming 10 years ago sucked. It was a mess. It was always frustrating. You never knew if your game was going to run or if it run good at all. It was always plagued with problems. Those days are gone now. PC games, you can just download it and it'll run because you can just download it and it runs and it'll run on hardware that's three four five six years old you don't need a brand new console anymore when you've got a playstation 5 pro that up here in canada is going to cost about a thousand dollars i can build a pretty good pc for a thousand dollars in the united states 699 us dollars you can build a very good PC for $699 using technology that's only a year or two old. You can sacrifice in key areas where it doesn't make a difference and get better graphics than the PlayStation 5 Pro. So as much as I love my console gaming, and I am a console gamer, I love console gaming. I have a PC, you can see. This thing is specced out to play all PC games at the highest spec possible, but I use it just for editing videos because that's where I spend most of my time. When it's time for me to just sit down, relax, turn my brain off, I'm reaching for my console, I'm turning it on because I know that it just works. So my advice to you guys, don't buy a PlayStation 5 Pro, you don't need it. My advice to me, well, I'm gonna get it. You know I'm gonna get it day one, if possible. And you guys can see more about it when it gets here. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.